Charlie Babrinskoy is vice chair and head of investment group at Ariel Investments. I'm referring, of course, to the chat we were just having about higher rates, Charlie, and I think that's where you're going here. Yeah, so for 40 years, rates have done only one thing, go down. Uh, every 10-year period, there was not a single time in the last 40 years in which if you looked forward 10 years, interest rates would not have been lower. And people had started taking that into account in investing, and that had lots of implications. It was very good for venture capital because venture capital earnings are in the far distant future, and so lower interest rates make those venture capital investments more valuable. It was very good for bonds. It was very good for levered companies and buyout funds. It was obviously bad for my business, which is value stocks, because value is all about companies with earnings today. And so I do think that that has now changed. Interest rates may not go up for the next 40 years consistently, but they have stopped going down. And we are now going to have to think about who benefited in the past, who was hurt, and reorient our investments for the new environment. Although a lot of your stocks are stocks that, you know, it's like it, this isn't too much of a, of a leap for you, as it may be for some, you know, growth funds or something like that. You've been in energy. You know, we're talking about, or we've been talking about Oracle. You're sticking with it. Yeah, so we thought that Oracle was a value stock. Today, it's trading at only 17 times earnings, which is actually right on a market multiple, maybe even a little lower with a much higher than market growth rate. So uh, Apache and the energy names that we own trading at six or seven times earnings are very much consistent with this theme that I've been giving you. I have to say, this has been a very tough year for small and mid-cap value stocks that mm -hmm. our firm uh, emphasizes the Russell 2500 value index is actually down 3% on the year. So I'm making a prediction about the future, but I got to acknowledge the market year to date has not followed this path. I think that's why people are reluctant to reposition because they're, you know, it's been 15, 10, 15 years that growth has worked. This, this undermines, uh, underpins so much of what we were talking about. Everything from literally private equity to venture capital to private credit. I mean, so much of the other side of this trade is literally in small cap growth. Yeah, and, and so that is the trick here, that, that something that has not worked for a long time, it is very hard to put your money behind. But I, And I think we have to just acknowledge that the, if the Federal Reserve wants to create a recession, if the Federal Reserve thinks that the economy is too hot, that we have a overheated job market, I happen to think that's delusional, but that there are some quotes from the members of the Fed that would make you think they think that. If they want to cause a recession, they can and that is never good for small cap value stocks. It tends not to be good for value in general because value stocks tend to be more cyclical. So we're going to get on the other side of this. At some point, the Fed will stop raising rates and they will acknowledge what I think is true, which is that inflation is, is going to get down to about 3%. It's not going to get down to 2%, but it is not going up. And when they acknowledge that and when they start cutting rates, which they will, Value should outperform. Are you looking past the auto workers strike? Borg Warner is one of the names that you like here, and you seem to be bullish on autos longer term. Just want to mention the president, when asked if the UAW should get that 40 percent wage hike, said yes. So that might add to the extent to which these negotiations drag out. Yeah, that, that could be tricky. Uh, they cannot afford 40 percent wage increases. I obviously want workers to get, um, and they have not kept up with inflation, so they absolutely have reasonable grievances. But the American auto industry cannot handle 40 percent increases. So we need to get a settlement on this. I think the good news is we will. And when we do, there's a lot of pent-up demand for cars. The number of cars on dealer lots is still way below where it should be. And frankly, Borg Warner is very well positioned for uh, electric power trains hmm. going forward. That's probably more critical. Uh, listen, are you going to see you too? Uh, I'm my partner and head of my firm, John Rogers, is going to be there opening <laughs> night. We're very excited about the sphere. Obviously, the market is now very excited about the sphere. This was a hated name that has really recovered. People do think that uh, U2 is going to be followed probably by Styles and some other mm. uh, younger um, rock stars that I would not have as much interest in. But there's going to be a great list of people performing at the Sphere. And I thank you for bringing this up. The stock's done very well. Probably time to be a little cautious. Yes, about this. Uh, it's so. up 80% year to date. And I think a classic example maybe of buy the rumor and sell the fact. As literally for those who are familiar with the whole saga, the, uh, the Sphere opens, I think, right now or this weekend. I mean, it's, it's imminent. Yeah, and, and the shows are going to be sold out. Longer term, it's actually more important that the company-owned content, this postcard from Earth, which is a film that The Sphere produced for its uh, showing to take advantage of all the multimedia experience you get at The Sphere, there's a lot riding on that. If they can sell tickets for $100, 
uh, during the day in Las wow. Vegas. That could be a, a big success. If you have to just rely on concerts, it won't be quite as successful. $100 a day. All right. Charlie, as always, thanks for your time, sir. We appreciate it.